everybody everybody praise the lord this is the day that the lord has made and we're choosing to rejoice and be glad in it magnify the lord with me let's exalt the name of the lord together this is the ephesians 320 ministries i am elder lisa let's go to worship hallelujah hallelujah uh, uh, again, you have won. 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 Uh, Hallelujah, God. Glory to God. He's won. He keeps winning the battles. We keep fighting with our faith. God keeps moving the devil out and all of his tricks and plans and plots and schemes of the enemy. They all get failed. They all get overturned. They all come crumbling, tumbling down. Humpty Dumpty set of the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And no matter what, the devil can't be put to back together again. Once God has destroyed the plan that the enemy has set forth, for God's people, we win. We win, saints. We win. And we're grateful to God for the winning spirit, the win we and the perseverance spirit and the I won't give up spirit and the I trust in the Lord spirit and the power of his might. The Lord is strong and mighty. The Lord is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. The The Lord strong and mighty. Who is this king of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads. Once again, I say, oh, ye gates, don't let your head be down. Don't let your spirit be burdened. Lift up your heads. Oh, ye gates, hallelujah, and lift them up to God the faith that you are standing on not my name you're standing on the name of jesus you're not even standing on the name of this ministry you're standing on the name of jesus jesus the alpha and the omega jesus the beginning and the end jesus the first and the last jesus the one who gave his life so we could live and have life more abundantly he has won again he keeps winning yeah. Hallelujah. Always, always, always. Hallelujah. Mm. On our behalf, this, this winning is not even really only just for him. This winning is for us. Hallelujah. So that those of us who will stand up in his name and stand strong in his name and stand, hallelujah, firm and flat-footed in his name. I came before the presence of the Lord with my shoes off because I wanted to be in holy ground. And when you start making a declaration like that, well, it does disturb the enemy, but I am putting the enemy on notice that once again, the Lord has won. Once again, the Lord has power. Once again, the Lord gets the victory. I don't get the victory. The Lord gets the victory. Yes, the, Lord. I don't feel yes, the Lord's glory is <laughs> prevailing and he has won again. Thank you, oh God. Anybody come to praise the yes. Lord? I came to praise the Lord. I love to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're grateful to God that when you praise the Lord, the enemy just gets so frustrated. When you praise the Lord, the enemy hmm. says, well, I can't do nothing to disturb her peace. So let me go ahead and go on to somebody else. But let me tell you something about the power that I declare that the enemy won't even have a foothold to go nowhere. That anyone that we know that the spirit and the power of the Lord is connected connected to every Hubbard, every Jenkins, every Callaway, every Moore, every Roberts, every Morton, every White, every King, that the power of the Lord, every Sidbury, every person connected to the power of the power of the power of the power of God, that they won't be able to be tempted. They won't be hoodwinked. They won't be set aside. The Lord's power. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 
Let the power fall. Let the power fall in your house. Let the power fall in your mind. Let the power fall in your kitchen, on your dining room table, in the living room, where if your office, wherever you are, let the power fall. You in the car, let the power fall. Hallelujah. Because we're calling, ah, God, on the name of the Lord. And when we call on the name of the Lord, surely, hallelujah, they'll get an answer when we call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. Cause he's my rock. He's my rock. My rock, my sword and shield. He's my wheel. He's my wheel. In the middle of a wheel, he will never, I know he'll never, never let me down. He's just a jewel, he's just a jewel that I have found. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name, oh, I love to pray, oh, I love to pray, oh, I love to praise his holy name, yeah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah. I love to praise, yes, oh God, his holy name. He's my rock. He's my rock, my sword and shield. He is my will. Hallelujah. In the middle of the will, I know he'll never, never let us down. He's a jewel. Hallelujah. I, I found a priceless jewel hallelujah because he wasn't lost i had to find him for myself yes oh god and when i found him i promise i'd never let him go i'd never let him go and so i'm grateful that i have found this love anyone grateful that you found this love and this is the love there's no greater love than he would give his life for us and so we're going to begin now uh, with Sunday school. God bless you, ambassadors, for your perseverance. <laughs> Hallelujah. And your faithfulness to God. We are in John 1, uh, first um, chapter of John uh, on this July the 3rd. Welcome to July. Glory to God. Yeah. 3rd of July. Ooh. It's amazing, isn't it? The seventh month. Half of the year down. Okay, let's just say that we are moving right along and the Lord is powerful uh, through it all. Uh, so chapter one, verses one through 14. We may or may not get on Facebook as well. Hallelujah. Uh, we've got everything that we need to go ahead and worship the Lord. Because Amen. We the Lord's supper table today. I do pray um, that you have your elements nearby. Praise God. By way of announcement uh, before our next first Sunday, uh, there will be new elements provided for us. Um, thankful that you all were refrigerating. For those of you who were refrigerating yours, yours have lasted probably longer than mine had lasted. Um, and so we thank God for that. But we're going to switch those out and get um, some fresh, uh, mm -hmm. 
uh, mm -hmm. elements for us. And for those of us who can use juice and crackers, you know, you know the expiration date on those. So don't you worry, uh, God. And so we're grateful to God. But have those nearby because we are going to have the Lord's Supper mm -hmm. uh, together. Mm -hmm. uh, so first, uh, uh, first chapter of John, verses 1 through 14. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's have, uh, well, Sister Nanette, since I heard your voice first, let's have you to read uh, <laughs> one, let's have you to read one through um, six. Uh, Sister Sherry will have you to read uh, seven through 11 when it's your turn. Um, and then Sister Hubbard, if you are uh, up for it today, and we pray you are, 12 through 14. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, oh God. Yes, oh God. Let me unmute, ask you to unmute Sister Hubbard. Hallelujah. I love to praise the Lord and I never get tired of that. Matter of fact, what I've understood about praise, the more I do it, the better I feel. Uh, mm -hmm. And so if you're not feeling well on oh. days, you're not feeling well, I encourage you to praise the Lord. Just Amen. Like, That's it. With everything you've got, with every piece of energy and every little voice you have left, whatever you have, give it over to the Lord. I promise you, he will multiply it and you will feel so much better when you give God glory and praise because that's what he created us for. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to do. We're going to praise Amen. the Lord. Sister, you're ready. ready. Hallelujah. Yes, Ella. Thank you. Good morning, Ephesians 320 ministry. Love you. Good morning. Good morning. Bless you. John chapter one, verses one through six, King James Version reads as follows. Verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And verse six says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. I'm grateful that um, John's life is a wonderful witness for us um, and that we are uh, not confused to believe that this John that's writing is talking about himself. He's talking uh -huh. about John the Baptist. And so um, mm -hmm. get that into the atmosphere. He is the forerunner, it is said, of Christ. He's the one who has gone before Christ to declare his coming. And he's never met him. He doesn't know what he looks like. All he knows is that God has spoken to him about the Messiah who will bring freedom and righteousness and peace. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it speaks about him uh, in, the, in the context of, and when we gather together to learn about him, I'm going, we're going to be baptized because he is the one who gives us this righteousness. So, so that's just what John the Baptist represents. Who John the Baptist represents to us is that baptism <clears throat> Uh, because we do know that he will be in the presence of Jesus when Jesus is baptized. Woo! Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. descending down on Jesus. And God speaks from heaven and said, in, him, in my son, in him I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. Woo! I mean to tell you, I'm thinking about that right there. I just want the Lord to say, I'm well pleased, Lisa. I'm well pleased. Yes, God. Anybody want to hear the Lord say your name and then say, well pleased after ah! it? I mean, I just yes, want to Yes, please, Lord. Yes. Please say you're well pleased with me. All the things I could do in this world, please be well pleased with me. God. Yes, oh God. So we're grateful to God for that. So in these verses, um, this is the best place if you are involved in, in relationship with someone who does not uh, have a relationship with Jesus or is um, a new convert, if you will. Um, this would be a great, let me try it one more time. This would be a great opportunity to be um, introducing them to the word. You would say to them, um, just start reading in the book of John. Just, just mm -hmm. begin to read the book of John. Mm -hmm. Because the, the book of John is like seemingly starting at Genesis. In the beginning. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word. Now, the title of this particular Sunday school review is The Word Becomes Flesh. 
So here's a wonderful hint. If John is talking to us about the word and it is a capital W, then it must be a personhood uh, uh, in some way. No noun, uh, only nouns rather, personal pronouns get um, double, uh, a W that would be capitalized. Every other would be word, uh, lowercase, right? So this must be about a person, an individual. Who is he talking about? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus. About Jesus. Oh in the beginning was Jesus. the word. So you could mm -hmm. actually substitute it and say, in the beginning was Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and the word and Jesus was with God and the word Jesus was God. He's talking mm -hmm. about Jesus. And so this helps a new believer or maybe even an unbeliever to understand that from the very beginning, John wants to make clear that his uh, writings about this gospel message will show to us that Jesus is not only the son of that was birthed through Mary and had human flesh and form like we do, all the organs, all the other things that he had. He did everything we have to do on a daily basis. He had to wash up. He had to go to the bathroom. He was a very human person, had to mm -hmm. eat, all of that. But more importantly, he was more. He was more. He was more. Somebody say he was more. He, he was, was more. more. He was divine. He's God in the flesh. Yeah. He to the earth. And so... And, and was there at the beginning. Wasn't just there when we see him come after he is impregnated in Mary's womb. He's at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so we're, um, we're, we're wonderfully grateful to know that and to believe that. And so this word, um, again, from John's gospel, John is unlike the other gospels in this way that he desires not to begin with the genealogy, not to begin with, and he derives from the line of Jesse. He wants us to know not only um, uh, the birth narratives like the other gospels, but he would like for us to know Jesus as a divine identity that also has a humanity. So when you talk about the gene genealogy, you're talking about the humanity. You want to know who he comes from. Uh, the, the reason I always talk about the Hubbards, the Jenkins, the Callaways, the Moors, the Roberts is because we need to know where we come from. Mm -hmm. And so for the Jews, they needed to know, well, how do you substantiate that this is Jesus, the Messiah? So that's why they gave the genealogy. And so for those of us who were doing the Old Testament study and we were like, how all these begats and who got who gave birth to who because genealogy is important in the ancestral line john goes about it a whole new way and starts by saying in the beginning jesus yes. was there with god and is the word and so that's one reason why you would introduce a new believer to the book of john maybe that's why even if you need to re uh, reaffirm your fire for god read the book of john because this book does in fact bring back to our remembrance this authority and this power. So in that first verse, I've already given you that, these are the beginning accounts of creation. That's why it's important for us to love creation. Everything God made, God said is good. You good? Are you good? God made you, then you're good. Amen. And if God made you and you're good, then stop uh, uh, permitting the devil to entice us to do evil. Stop hurting what God said is good. Uh, and, and this is, you know, this fits where you, where you fit in. Do not discount the beauty of who God made you to be. Do not despair about how you are not like them. How God made you to be is what God wanted. Mm -hmm. But yeah. knowing that it's in his image and his likeness and that we may not understand it, but God loves us and said we were good. And that the, the, the word is God saying, I speak. All this year, we have been saying, right, that when we speak, we create. Like God, when God spoke, the moon, the stars, the sun, the waves, the oceans, the fish, the animals, when God spoke, there was creation. Okay. And so God is saying, even in this word, this word speaks and it brings life and it brings hope. And it brings not only that 
when we look at our own lives, but when we look at nature and how it evolves. So I'm looking at a tree actually in the backyard right now. And the, some of the branches obviously have been damaged. So some of the leaves are brown. There's a, a, a huge tree. It's gotta be like 30 feet tall. And the majority of it is green, but there are a few branches that have brown leaves. What does that say to me about nature? The same thing it says to me about humanity. When we get disconnected from the root of the source of life, Life, it dies. The, the leaves are dead because it got disconnected somehow to the branches or the branches got disconnected somehow from the the um the trunk and now it's dead. The same with us. God is using nature to show us how he brings forth life and how it evolves and how it is, is either thriving or dying. Mm -hmm. And the same was in the beginning, verse number two, and he refers to this nature of the word, again, characterizing God to be the father, Abba father, the one who created all things for his pleasure. Not now, this is where some people would say, but he wants us to enjoy life. Yes, but primarily he created us for his pleasure. So what pleases God in you? What? And this is where John is probably uh, most, not do, as direct, but eventually he's going to say that that's why Jesus is so much our example because Jesus did everything that was the, at the pleasure of God, mm -hmm. even dying for the pleasure of God so that the people that God had created could live and that he could be the witness of the creation story that would save that, which like those limbs and those leaves from dying. Mm -hmm. right um so all things were made by him without him was nothing that was made in verse number three if you have anything that comes to mind or any questions just jump right on in and say wait i want to know about because that's what we're here for in our sunday school time together and notice in verse number four in him was life and the life was the light of men so not only is uh, humanity intended to have this uh, hu uh, this human flesh and form to be able to do and to manifest and to grow and to produce life and to do all these things, but we're also to, meant to carry light because in darkness, uh, darkness representing what? Anybody know what darkness is representing here in this particular verse? Sin. Oh, uh, sin. So when we, I shouldn't say that verse. In verse number five, because it shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So darkness representing sin, sin representing a rebellion against God. And so Jesus is not only the word made flesh, he's the life. life. Jesus is the light. He, so all of these de defining moments that John is saying about who Jesus is, is a great introduction for somebody who don't know who Jesus is. Mm hmm and then also for those of us who may have lost our way to remembering why we're here and we're here to do what Jesus also did, right? To be the light in the dark places. This darkness is, uh, as you all said, is the sin. So all the people who receive the word, which is Jesus, now have this gift of the light and the life so that we can draw away and draw out darkness. Yes, so everywhere you go, there's supposed to be a difference. So when people see you coming, they should be happy to see you coming and not sad to see you coming. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be like, oh, here comes Lisa. She going to come with a woe waste me spirit. She going to come with bad news, negativity. She's gonna Because we're meant to come with the light. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not because you are you know, necessarily always telling jokes in the life of the party and the first to get on the dance floor, but that the light is in your life and that yeah. Jesus's hand is on you and in you and moving and that everything about yeah. you speaks life, light, and living. You mm -hmm. live in. Hallelujah. You're not the dead thing like the leaves on the tree. You are living, a living example of who? this experience of being alive in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you're not feeling like you're living your best life, 
It would be that Jesus says, well, I want more time with you or I want to be more of the example of the witness in you because in living in Jesus, there's this liberating freedom. I mean, it is the 4th of July holiday. Can we talk about freedom for a minute? I realize that this is a celebration of a freedom that maybe some of our people don't even really uh, celebrate because we didn't get that same experience when they did. But the, nevertheless, there is a beauty about freedom yeah. and <laughs> being free. And this darkness that has been driven out away from us who have accepted the word and now walk in the life and the light of the example of the word have this liberating light that lives in us and shines through us. Mm -hmm. and, and the darkness won't be able to understand you. I'm just pausing. The darkness won't be able to comprehend you. And so, and on the opposite side, you will not be able to understand darkness. Why do we try to rationalize why people go into a, a church and start shooting people? Why do we try to rationalize and understand darkness when you are not of darkness? You, you will not understand it because God has removed us from that darkness so that we, we can't even comprehend how someone would kill their child and then try to kill themselves and fail or kill themselves as well as kill their child. We cannot understand that you can't understand darkness you're not meant to understand darkness oh and but again john is also making sure that the darkness can't even comprehend the light it starts questioning it starts doubting and we know this because um if we wanted if we wanted to i could just jump to verse 11 but i'm gonna have sister sherry go ahead and read first but keep in mind that last statement that the darkness can't comprehend the light. Sister Sherry, whenever you're ready. Hallelujah. Thank you, Elder. Again, we're in John 1, and I'm reading verse 7 through 11 in the King James Version. Verse 7 reads, The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Amen. Yes, God. So then we have um, recording in progress. Just one second. Yeah, you got that feedback again, Elder. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right uh so remember what i asked you to quick consider i asked you to consider um the darkness the inability to comprehend mm -hmm. the light mm -hmm. okay um and so um sister sherry read seven through um verse 11 yes um where do you see that maybe uh, a place where the light which verse do you see where the light was not received verse 10 mm -hmm. read it read 10 again he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Mm -hmm. The world 
signifying, thank you again for reading it, uh, the world signifying not just the globe or the universe, but the world being those who were outside of the will, those who would continue to be in their sinful nature, those who are not looking for the Messiah in the way that God said will be the new thing he'll do. This is the world and they did not receive the light. Therefore, representing anything in a sinful nature is representing darkness. Even Jesus got rejected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to take a moment to consider that for all of us who've ever experienced rejection and did not bounce back from it or are still harboring ill feelings toward those who rejected us or, or trying to understand why they rejected us and uh, doing the best we can so that they won't reject us in the future. And God is saying, but they rejected Jesus. Why are you tripping? Right. Rejection could have been from the fact that the light was too much for the darkness. Their motives in your life were not pure. So therefore they rejected the light. Their intent for being in your presence was not holy. And so they were rejecting the light. And instead of us just saying, thank you, Jesus, yes. we say, well, what could we have done differently? And in fact, if Jesus, who was doing everything that Jesus could on behalf of those who were of the world, the sinful nature, and they still rejected him, why are we not then supposed? Why are we surprised and why are we then yet trying to help those to still accept us? Mm -hmm. Well, he's been rejected. And he's the life of the world. He's the one who gives us life freely, not because of anything we have done, but because of who he is and how much he loves us. And so um, that just is me getting us across the field to get real quickly to near the end. But there's um, a responsibility, y'all, then, about the relationship that we have with God that will impact the relationship we have even with unbelievers. So just because they reject you don't mean you stop loving them. That's because they reject you don't mean you stop praying for them. Because if that would be the case, then Jesus would not be praying for a whole lot of people. That's right. But Jesus' awesome role, we know, as he is seated on the right hand of God, is that he's praying for the whole world. He's praying for people to come out of the darkness and accept the light. He's praying for people to come out of their bondage, of their misunderstandings of him and come into an understanding to be transformed. So we ought to take the same uh, hint and follow Jesus and do the same thing. So when they reject you, pray for them. He says to, to even bless those who, who come against you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you keep putting yourself in some sort of victim-like right. uh, position with them, but it does not mean that you get the opportunity just to hate or be angry or be bitter about it. No, God is saying, testify to the light. Te what does that mean? John says, I have never met him. I don't know what he looks like. But I know he is coming because God said that we needed a Messiah and a savior. And without having this, without having a relationship with Jesus, he uh, personally, he still testifies about the light. And so by our actions, even with those who reject us, we're testifying about the light. They, uh, by the way, not in this lesson, but they end up killing John for testifying about the light. How willing are we to go all the way with Jesus when Jesus went all the way for us? So John is the, John is being given to us because John wants us to remember a couple of things. John wants us to remember not John the Apostle, but John the Baptist, I believe, has been written by, by John the Apostle so that we will remember how humble John the Baptist was. He's, he, he, he later will say um, 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 about the glory. He will later say about the honor. And we do know later in this chapter, John the Baptist will say, I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes. 
Right. So we have this opportunity to be uh, learning from John the Baptist about the light and how we share the light, even with the O's who hate the light, as well as how we remain humble about how we would uh, appreciate this relationship that we have that we should not take for granted or we should not feel like we are entitled like you know I, 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 I God owes me I mean I didn't I didn't have to come and God doesn't owe us nothing we are indebted to God and, and with, with that indebtedness we are to bear light to the world he was in the world and the world was made by him you mean the, the one that made you you are rejecting? Yes. That's what that means. The one who created you, because if Jesus was the word who was there at the beginning, then Jesus is the one who made you. He was there when creation happened. Mm -hmm. And those were the ones who were rejected. He said, I came into my own. So this gives us an implication that it's later, that even when he came into the earth, he became uh, a human form, that even when he, he said that he was the son of God, they rejected him and said, no, you're not. Quit blaspheming. No, you're not. Quit telling lies. Even his own half sibling said, no, you're not. You're not that special. Mm -hmm. God wouldn't have chosen you to do that. And so even when our own family tries to declare that you're not that special, you're not that, you're not that awesome, you're not that great, don't feel and take that rejection. You're not that pretty, you're not that, you're not that slim, you're not that, you're not that fine. Don't take that rejection and embed it in your heart. Rebuke it because Jesus had to rebuke it and keep it moving. Yes, Lord. What if Jesus has said, you know what, they don't believe me, God, and I just I don't think I can keep going. I don't think I can keep moving. Jesus didn't care about that. Jesus said, I know why I'm here. Mm -hmm. I know what I came to do. I am the light of the world, and I will bring life to those dark, dead, dry places. Mm -hmm. All right, Sister Hubbard, what, any questions, any comments, anything going on in your mind? Mm -hmm. I know you all read this before, so if you have anything. Nothing? All right. All We're right. Good. All right. Sister Hubbard. So in the verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, not of the will of his flesh, not the will of man, but of God, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Uh, next time you go to God, say, Jesus, you are grace and truth. You are the good thing that blesses us and you are the thing that exposes because truth, what? Exposes the lie. And what's the lie? The lie is that you have this uh, ability to do whatever you want to do. The lie is what the enemy would like to keep us separated from the promises of God. That's the lie. But Jesus came to expose the truth. And what does the truth do? Does anybody know how that goes? What, the, what was the truth? What would the truth do? Set you free. Set you free. Thank yeah. you, sister. But the truth, or if you like the other verses that say make you free, it will make you free. Mm -hmm. That's what the truth will do. The truth will drive out the lie. And every time the lie, and what are the lies? Uh, that you don't, you won't get well, that you won't find love, that you won't be happy, that you won't have peace, that they will, they'll keep on doing what they're doing to you on your job, that they will keep calling you um, uh, everything but a child of God. The lies of the devil. When Jesus says, I came that you would have the truth and that the truth would set you free. Glory to God, glory to God. All right, so, uh, <laughs> verse, number, so verse number 12 is, uh, I would get excited because we have accepted him uh, as the children of God. We've received him. And when <laughs> you've received the Lord, what does it say? You become the sons of God. You Don't skip the first part, though, Sister Sherry. Please go back just two more verses. Two, I mean, two more words. What you get before you become the sons of God? What do you get first? Oh. You get power. You get power. We get power. 
We are not this feeble, defenseless people who could just sit back and say, we got to just wait on God. God is saying, no, I'm waiting on you. I gave you what you need to defend yourself, your family, your friends, all the people who you love and care for. I have given you the power. So despite what we see in the world with all of the violence and all of the victimization and people doing this and doing that, we have the power. Elder, I don't have the power. I don't have an M38 uh, or whatever the, the gun is in my house. No, but you have the power of faith. You have the power of the Holy Ghost. You have the power to start declaring and decreeing that no weapon formed against your family or yourself or your loved ones yes. or or your city will be able to prosper. You have received the power so that you can then testify if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where. Amen. This lesson is to remind us about the light and the witness. So not only are we this light, but we are the witness and that we have this power of grace and truth so that the glory, thank you, Sister Hubbard, for reading about the glory, the gl so that God can be glorified. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So all that praying we do on Saturday so God be glorified. Mm -hmm. All that preaching uh, we do uh, uh, on Sunday morning, on Thursday morning, mm -hmm. all of that we're doing, all that Bible study, all that yes. midweek, and so that the Lord will be glorified. Yes, Lord. And that you can behold the glory, which means that you can see the glory. So if you've not seen the miracles happening or the signs happening or the ah. wonders happening, he's saying, but that's why I gave you the power, because I want you to see it happening. That's right. Thank I want God. you to enjoy. This is why people get so twisted about uh, life. They think that enjoying life are all the things that the world says. But for us, enjoying life, I get some of that stuff too of the world. I get to go to the movies. And I get to go to the concerts. I get to go on trips and travel. But I get to go with this power that they don't have. Mm -hmm. I get to go and do the same things they're doing, but we have this glory that shall be revealed. And that everywhere we go, every city we go, every country we've been in, that no matter who it is, they still know we're special because we still got the light in us that says the glory of the Lord has been revealed. Mm -hmm. Because we have the word of God that is Jesus, that is in us, because of our acceptance of him. And so when he dwells amongst us and we say, well, we didn't have Jesus. Uh, I, I'm going to go back real quickly to 14B. When we go back up to 14B and we say, because we had Jesus, um, excuse me, that we don't know Jesus like the disciples knew Jesus and we don't get the benefit of what John the Baptist experienced because mm -hmm. we haven't seen Jesus, but we have the, what they Many of them may not even understand that we now have and take sometimes for granted. We have his spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. We carry his spirit. He dwells among us in the form of his spirit. So no, we don't get Amen. to have Jesus in the, in the bodily realm, uh, uh, but we have Jesus in the spirit realm. Sister Sherry. I uh, go ahead, Elder. I'm sorry. You had a question? No, not a question. Okay. I was just okay. going to make a comment, but you've already made it. I was just adding on. Go ahead, okay. Elder. Sorry. All right. All right. Well, no, go ahead. Testify. Because every <laughs> now and again, it's good for you to have it in your own mouth. You know, that's why it's important for you to use your voice. Go ahead. Use your voice. Come on. I was just going to add you. I was just going to say amen to the fact that they didn't have the spirit. The Holy Spirit hadn't come into the world. They knew nothing about what it feels like to have the Holy Spirit dwelling within them. Absolutely. Or the Holy Spirit praying for them when we don't know what to pray about. Absolutely. Now, yeah. of course, we know that short, sometime later when the day of Pentecost comes, they mm -hmm. get this experience. But considering that John the Baptist is going the forerunner of Jesus Christ, he doesn't have the benefit of the Holy Spirit to give him that power, that dunamis power, dunamis meaning that explosive power or that thing that unfortunately Sister Hubbard heard at three o'clock this morning that woke her up. But that dunamis power that's intended to be utilized for good. Good, 
Mm -hmm. John the Baptist was still doing good without it. Can you imagine then what John the Baptist could do without the power of the Holy Ghost? And we who have the power of the Holy Ghost act like we can't do? Come on mm -hmm. right now. Yes, I just can only imagine. And so mm -hmm. before you start thinking, well, you know, I'm not called to be the forwarder of Christ. I'm not called to be a minister of the gospel. You absolutely are called to be a witness and a testimony to him. You may not preach and, and hold the microphone, but your life is meant to be a testimony of his grace and truth. Mm -hmm. His grace and truth. So how are you going to reflect his grace and truth this week? How are you going to reflect this light and life that has been given to us so that we can then draw out, push it back. What's that one special we used to, well, I guess sometimes people still say, back, back, give me 50 feet. Give, give me more than 50 feet, back all the way back, darkness to the pit of hell from where you came from. Back all the way up off of light because the moment you put light in any dark place, darkness it is it's gone. And no matter how little the light, it's no longer dark. Right. So imagine if your life, which is full of the glory, full of the majesty of the grace and the truth of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost, when we show up, okay. but that would be because saints, we have the responsibility to utilize this gift of the light of righteousness and truth and peace with humility. Mm -hmm. just like John just like John thank you John thank you John for the example you, of the humility all right any questions any other testimonies or thoughts that you would like to share hallelujah hallelujah so this week your, your challenge this week is to live in a way that reflects uh, this grace and this truth uh, to live in a way that would allow that the word that's become flesh, that, that you were made by him and without him, nothing would have been made and that we owe the Lord by our witness. See that there in the overview that the word and provides us to have the witness and that even if you become rejected, don't worry because you have received the power, you've received the anointing and the authority and for whoever will <laughs> believe and receive, they too will get the blessing and the breakthrough. And I'm moving to the next slide because I wanted to make sure that you knew again how much we mean this when we say that Jesus became human to show us that we can live in grace and truth we can live in grace and truth because jesus lived in this earth and he rebuked every demonic attempt to steal kill and destroy he put the word on it what did he tell satan when he tried to tempt him after his 40 day fast the uh, live not by the, the bread alone but by every word, every that, word proceeds that proceeds out of the mouth, the of, mouth god. of god isn't that what he said mm -hmm. yep now, if every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is Jesus, because Jesus is the word, he could have said, because I am he who has sent, but he said, nope, I'm the father after the father. Mm -hmm. Even Jesus' humility is amazing. All right, mm -hmm. quality quiz questions, here we go. In the beginning, question number one from lesson number five, in the beginning <laughs> was the blank. Word. Word. Was the word, was the word. In the beginning was the word, was the word. John the Baptist was sent to do what? Question number two, be an apostle, bear witness, or be the light from John chapter one, verses six and seven. Bear witness. Bear witness. Bear witness. Because who's the light? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that Jesus is the light. Light of the world. Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. Come on, y'all. Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. He's, He's ever shining in my soul. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He's forever shining in our soul. So as you uh, mute your line, hallelujah. I got you, Cherry. I got you. We're going to say our closing prayer together. I'm grateful again for this lesson entitled The Word Becomes Flesh from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, lesson number five of this new unit on the summer quarter. Uh, give us, O oh God, in this our prayer to you. Heavenly Father, you demonstrated your love for us when you sent your son to live among us and be our light. Help us be attentive to the light of your son. Show us how we might reflect that light to our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And our thought to remember is God's salvation has dwelt among us. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's a good thing to know that Jesus is that light of the world and he's forever shining, forever reigning, forever, uh, forever giving us the power that we need for our soul. Anybody remember what your soul is? I know you're muted, but just wave your hand if you remember what your soul represents. Hallelujah. What's your soul represent? Uh-huh. That's all right. That's all right. It's in your notes. You're going to find it. Hallelujah. 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 It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. Hallelujah. That's your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And so if God is in um, in a desire to have all of those, that's why we got to get our emotions uh, not to be all over the place. That's why it's the enemy's trick to try to have our emotions out of sorts or have that our will would not be the will of God. That's why we need to connect to that branch, that vine, so that our leaves won't wither and will not faint. All right, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory. Gonna try to go Facebook Live. Let's see. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down glory glory hallelujah since i lay my burdens down friends don't treat me like they used to since i lay my burdens down Friends, don't treat me like they used to since I lay my burdens down. I'm going home to be with Jesus since I lay my burdens down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I lay my burdens down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I lay my burdens down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I lay my burdens down, burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord, since I lay my burdens down, burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord, since I lay my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah, 
since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Hallelujah. Had to lay them down. Had to lay them down. Had to lay some friends down. Had to lay some habits down. Had to lay some attitudes down. Had to lay some trials down. Had to lay them down for the Lord to deliver us. Had to lay it down so the Lord could clean us up and, and put us back on the road of righteousness. Had to lay it down so that the Lord can have his way and divinely show us that the word of God is truth and light and peace and hope. And that that Grace and that truth will follow us. That that goodness, look over your shoulder. Goodness, look over your other shoulder. And mercy, come on, will follow you all the days of your life. Why? Because you put your burdens down and you said yes to Jesus. Hallelujah. And your soul is anchored in the Lord. Hallelujah. Your soul is anchored in the Lord. When you put your burdens down and you pick up the graciousness of the cross and the witness of the cross, everything changes. Listen, nothing will keep you down when you have Jesus. You, all you need to do is cast it over to the Lord and let the Lord handle it for you. Anybody believe that today? I believe that with everything in it. Has anybody tried Jesus? I've tried Jesus. I've tried Jesus. And when you try Jesus, not just on one or two occasions, but on a continual, consistent, all day, every day, 365 or 66, if it's a leap year, I'm going all the way with Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody going to desire to go all the way with Jesus, I'm going all the way with Jesus. And so as we get ready for our scripture reading, hallelujah, we're going to uh, ask that Sister Sherry uh, will take us to our scripture reading. It is uh, uh, a, good, a good way to stand on and stand firm. Uh, and whenever you're ready, you can unmute your line and come and give us the scripture reading for the day. But the word of God is available to us uh, to give us insight and to show us the way that the Lord would have us to go and to know how precious we are to God. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Sister Sherry. Yes, yes I will I be will reading be. this morning from Hebrews 1 in the NIV version of the Bible, verses 1 through five, four, I'm sorry. And it reads as follows. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The son, is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven and verse four reads, so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited isn't superior to theirs. Hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. Though the grass wither, the flower faded, the word of our God will stand forever. God bless you, Sister Sherry, that reading of Hebrews chapter one, verses one through four. Wanted to make sure, because after I preached on Wednesday, I realized folk don't know Jesus to be the preeminence. And I, I was really kind of uh, heartbroken, but that's okay. Uh, it's an opportunity because pre the preeminence is what Sister Sherry read. It's his superiority. It lets us know he's the supreme power. And unlike what other People might think that the president has the supreme power or princes or queens or kings of other nations that have that. We know better. We know that Jesus is the true preeminence, the one with all the power and the authority. Because why? Because God gave it to him. And that when we follow after him, then it's the same thing I've been saying to us for the last three or four weeks, that when you hear that you are the heir 
of Christ, that it changes your posture and your position. It allows you to know that you have the ability to go through anything, not just because of your ability, but, but the supreme power is going to carry you through it. He's the preeminence. He's the one who has every answer. He's the preeminence. He's the superior power over every other power that tries to come against you. He's the preeminence. Hallelujah. That's what preeminence means it's that supreme power and authority and i don't want anybody walking away not understanding that jesus is that power and that authority and that if you need power god says that it's set above everybody else then go to jesus if you need an answer that nobody else has an answer to or have a question rather than no one else has an answer to go to jesus because he is the preeminence hallelujah the superior power over every other power and he sets you above because you carry his light. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the scripture reading, oh God. So as we get ready now to go into prayer, I'm moving things a little quicker today because we were so delayed and I know your time is valuable, but we wanna be able to give prayer time. Uh, and prayer, listen, saints of God, it's a, it's a precious gift. Uh, we pray uh, not because we are just only in perilous times, but that's one reason you should definitely pray uh, because these are perilous times. But we should pray because it is our communication unto God. It's us letting God know that we are, are wanting to be in this fellowship. And I don't know any better way to be in fellowship with God than to talk. Um, what, what do most uh, marriage counselors tell married couples? Your failure in your marriage is because you don't communicate. And so uh, why would we then, uh, and, 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 and on your job, what do you say? My, I, I didn't know. No one communicated it to me. In the family line, I didn't know. No one communicated. So communication must be a really important thing even to us. And you know if it's important to us because God made us to be able to be communicators Unlike every other thing that God created, we're the only ones who can talk. Why wouldn't God then want you to talk to him? Come on, somebody. And so prayer is vitally important. And the Bible says that the people are fainting because they're not praying. And he says to tell us that we should pray always, when, always, when, always, always, always. Uh, when you get up in the morning, pray. Do like a Daniel three times a day, all throughout the day. You face a situation, Lord, help me. It don't have to be long and elaborate. It just has to be you calling on the name of the Lord, asking for help, and then being available when he answers. I'll let you. Anybody available? Yeah. I'm available for when you answer God, even when you answer that I've been wrong, even when you answer that I didn't do what I should have done and you give me correction. Why? Because he chastens those whom he loves and he loves you so much. He doesn't want you standing in the same error. And so if your prayer life is jacked up, it's a good time to reinstitute your prayer life. If your <laughs> prayer life has been a little slack, it's a good time to reinstitute your prayer life. If your prayer life is non-existent i come to revive it in you this morning that you need to pray 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 and we're going to do the lord's prayer following the example that jesus gave to the disciples and we will be led in the lord's prayer after this song selection by sister ninette because even jesus made it a point to teach his disciples how to pray hallelujah so if you don't know what else to pray pray the lord's prayer you don't know what else else to say say the lord's prayer you don't know what else to stand on stand on the lord's prayer hallelujah we're grateful to god we bless the name of the lord and there's a song i heard in revival this week and i want to thank uh, mount ivory missionary baptist church for having <coughs> having me in revival who is college type <coughs> <coughs> For having me in revival this week, for inviting the Ephesians 3:20 ministry. You heard your shout out, right? Hallelujah. And thank you for all of you who attended and/or prayed with me uh, while we were in revival. 
But there was a song that was sung <clears throat> that gets me excited again uh, about talking with Jesus. Anybody remember the song I may be talking about? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's an old one. I just pray the choir director doesn't beat me up later. Hallelujah. I have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. He will hear your faintest cry and answer by and by. And feel a little prayer wheel churning. And have a little fire burning. Have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He'll hear our faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer will turn in. And you know a little fire is burning. You'll have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Come on, let's have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer will turn in. You'll know a little fire is burning. You'll have a little talk with Jesus. Make it right. One more time. Come on, let's have a talk. Let's have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear your faintest cry. He will answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer will turn in, you will know a little fire's burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Hallelujah. Talk with Jesus. And then that's going to help us to have a little talk with Jesus as she carries us into the Lord's prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes. And the Lord's prayer is Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. And it begins, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. It is your glory, oh God, that we come to have this little talk with you, God. It is your glory, your grace, and your truth, Jesus, that we want to find ourselves uh, existing in on a daily basis, not just only when we are in desperate times, but even when we are in our good days. We want your grace and your truth to be what would lead us and guide us. We thank you, oh God, for this time now that you have allowed us to gather together. We are your people, oh God, we're called by your name. And you said if we come humbly before you and seek your face and turn from any wicked ways, you then said you'll deliver us from our sin and heal our land. God, we need a healing. Our land needs healing. The land of the earth, yes, oh God, the universe needs healing, but also the land of our individual bodies, God. We need healing. Heal us, oh God, from anything that will cause us to be unlike you. Heal us, oh God, from anything that tries to get itself as well uh, uh, in our wellest day. God, heal us, Lord, from where we have walked against your will or your way. Help us in the name of your son, Jesus, to be healed in our mind and our thoughts, to be healed in our actions and our communications with one another. Because God, you said it's the way we treat each other. We should learn to treat each other with love, with compassion, and with patience. And so God, I pray an impartation in all of your believers today, those who will be live or on the replay, anybody who touches this prayer by faith and comes into the presence of this power prayer. Lord, we're believing you now that when you speak to our hearts today, when you speak to our minds today, 
when you speak to our spirits today in the preached word, when you speak to us through the Sunday school lesson, when you spoke to us through the prayer, when you spoke to us through the scripture reading, Lord speak, hallelujah, we your people, we will hear and we will obey. And now God, there were several people, Lord, in the pillars worship on Thursday that asked that we would lift them up. Lord, lift them up, God. Lift them, oh God, name by name, situation by situation. Lord, as I outstretch my hand to the page where their names are written, ah, oh God, we pray, oh God, that you will come in like a flood on their behalf. Build up a standard against the devil. Make the devil back all the way up off of them. Matter of fact, God, we're believing you're going to send the devil back to the pit of hell so that mothers who are praying for their children, their children will come out of the pit of hell. For their family members who have sick ones in the nursing home, that sickness will get up off of that loved one. In the name of Jesus, we command that the devil will loose his hold off of your people, oh God, because we are your people now. We are your people called, called to pray to you. And so, Lord, here we are. We're believing God by our calling on you. Jesus, late in the midnight hour, Jesus, midday on today, Jesus at the Lord's supper table, Jesus calling on you, the Alpha, Omega, the beginning, the end, we're calling on you, Lord. We're calling on you for every church, open in the name of Jesus the Christ. We're calling on you that your word will prevail. We're calling on you, God, that you'll give us a word from on high. We're calling on you, God, because there's no one else to call on. We don't call on Buddha. We don't call on sorcerers, or witches, or warlocks. Lord, we denounce everything that's not like you and holy. And we ask that when we call on your name, we can get an answer that the glory will fall when the power comes from calling on your name. God, we call on your name. And we ask that you, oh God, will be pleased with us. Rebuke anything, Lord, that's trying to cause us to follow after the lie and not the truth. It is, oh God, because we trust you. It is, oh God, because we hear your word and we know that you, Jesus, are the word made flesh. It is you, oh God, that we love. You, oh God, we follow. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak in every situation. Overturn poverty. Overturn homelessness. Speak Lord, overturn cancer, overturn diabetes. Speak, Lord, come against multiple sclerosis, lymphoma, cancer. Speak, Lord, come against dementia, Alzheimer's, anything that's come against the mind, the body, or the spirit. Speak, Lord, against the demon of depression, bipolar, schizophrenia. Speak to it, Lord. We ask you to speak even now in the name of Jesus. If there be any other needs amongst your people who have come to their altar that we've made right here in the house. We come to the altar, oh God, bow down in spirit, maybe not on our knees, but bow down in spirit, knowing that you are God, you are everything, and we release it, oh God, in your atmosphere, because if we have a need, you said, I shall supply every one of your needs according to the riches you supply the riches according to your power you supply the power and so god no longer being behind in anything but being the preeminence of you oh god we stand in your superiority we stand in your power and we stand in your love lord honor this prayer today lord honor your servants today lord honor your ambassadors today lord honor us honor us honor this request honor this time honor us god honor us because we honor you lord we honor you and we call your name great and greatly to be praised it is it is it is in jesus name and it is god for your glory that we do pray and the people of god hallelujah we believe you and we say amen because we believe you we say amen because we believe you and we believe the prayer we say amen will you give god some praise hallelujah you can put your hands together if you're comfortable in doing that. You can open up your mouth if you're comfortable in doing that. You can run around your house if you're comfortable in doing that. Whatever you can do to give God. Hallelujah. The praise. Hey, hallelujah and the glory. Hallelujah. 
and the honor you deserve the glory romans chapter 8 and the honor we lift our hands in worship hallelujah and we bless your holy name cause you deserve the glory and the honor yes god we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name you deserve the glory does he deserve the glory and the honor we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name cause you deserve the glory and the honor we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name cause you are great you do miracles so great and there's no one else like you yes god no one else like you cause you deserve the glory and the honor we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name cause you deserve the glory hey hallelujah and the we lift our hands in worship we lift our hands in worship we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name hallelujah hallelujah we bless the name of the lord we bless your name oh god hallelujah we bless your name Oh God, we magnify you, Lord. We exalt you. We bless your name. Oh God, hallelujah. You deserve the glory and the honor. Come on, praise the Lord in your way. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. Release yourself to the praise atmosphere. You are worthy, God, to be praised. Hallelujah. You woke us up this morning. Hallelujah. You kept us safe last night. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we honor you today. We bless you today, God, because it didn't have to be so. Lord, somebody didn't wake up this morning, but God, we, let, we thank you for life, 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 life. And then you said, I'll give it to you more abundantly. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. Come on, y'all. Come on now. Tell the Lord with everything in you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out of the dark place. Thank you for bringing me out of the darkness. Thank you for coming in the pit of despair and grabbing me out. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. God. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. Was anybody else in a pit? I know I was in a pit. I didn't even like my own self. I was in a pit and the Lord came and got me out. He snatched me out and said, no more of this foolishness. I need you to come up a little higher. I got things for you to do. I got places for you to go. I got things for you to see. And you're inhibiting my move in your life. Does anybody remember the day the Lord said, I'm trying to do something with you, but you're holding me back. That. You're setting yourself up for failure. Come on, somebody. Will you release yourself to say thank you, God, for helping me to no longer put my own stumbling block in my way. There was troubles that we self-inflicted and it got in our way. But God said, I desire to do something. 
and he he allowed us to wake up to ourselves. I'm so grateful. Thank you, God. Hey, he allowed us to wake up. Ah, not, and I don't just mean wake up out of a nap. I mean to wake up and to see ourselves in the way that we ought to behave, to behave and to be. Hallelujah. We are his people, saints of God. Therefore, we're not able to just do anything or say anything. That's why we have to be careful to guard our mouths as well as our hearts and our minds so that we don't find ourselves being the thing that causes the curse. I even said it on Wednesday, somebody needs to stop putting curses in their mouths about themselves. You need to begin to speak life over you, speak life over your body, over your health, over your mind, over your friendships, over your relationships, over your marriages, over your children, speak life over your business, speak life over your finances, over your four one case over your retirement plan. Speak life over everything in your neighborhood. So you got some crazy neighbors. Speak life over them. They shall live and not die. They coming out of their bondage. Speak life. Hallelujah. What good is it to call it what it already is? God says to call those things that be not as though they are. They, you well, I'm well in the name of Jesus. My, I'm well. It's, everything is well with me. I'm well. I'm well. I'm well, hallelujah, hallelujah. And everything around me is well because we're speaking life. Romans chapter eight, hallelujah. Uh, we're going to the table shortly. So please remember to have your elements with you. We're going to the table because we've had a little talk with Jesus now, hallelujah. We told him all about it. Yes, oh God. And we're, and we're standing uh, as a witness of our God. Romans chapter eight. Hallelujah. We're grateful to God. We bless the name of the Lord. Romans chapter eight. Yes, oh God. Thank you. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I'll be reading from obviously the NIV. <laughs> Thank God for flexibility. Anybody know how to be flexible? You, you know, just it's more than one way to get it done, huh? You, you know how to be flexible. Uh, you can bounce back. It's all right. Thank you, God. Romans chapter eight. Uh, happy holiday weekend to all of you. Thank you, oh God. I pray you have a safe celebration, however you celebrate, and that the Lord will be in the midst of your celebration. Uh, Romans chapter eight. Uh, I'll read for us verses 18 through 21. Uh, just a heads up, my emphasis will be on 21. Uh, we give God praise and glory for the word of the Lord. Have it. Give me a high five if you have it. Yes, oh God. Yep. All right. Thank you, Lord. Give me a high five if you have it. I saw one high five. If you have it, give me a high five if you have it. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, in the NIV, Romans chapter eight, verses, um, I pray I said 18. 18 through 21. Good, good, good. Y'all pray for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, grateful to God for the NIV. And I guess I will be able to read it also in the NET. Let's go. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed for the creation was subjected to frustration, not by his own choice, uh, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Uh, again, from uh, now the NET, the New English Translation, verses 18 through 21. For I consider that our present sufferings cannot even be compared to the coming glory that will be revealed to us. For the creation eagerly waits for the revelation of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility 
not willingly, but because of God who subjected it. That's why I wanted to read this version because some folks think that they're going through situation and God don't know you're going through it. But God saying, maybe I permitted the situation because I needed you to be able to know you are my creation. You are my people. You are my child. I want you to be my child, the child of God. The king of glory wants you to be like a little child unto a father. C continuing on, continuing on, continuing on. And it says, who's subjected it. Here's the power in hope. Verse number 20 at the end in the NET says that it was uh, subjected it in hope. And remember what we said about hope. Hope is with great expectation about what you have faith to believe. So hope and faith are different because the hope is saying, I have this faith, but I am with great expectation and anticipation. I'm willing to wait for it. That's what the hope is. Don't want you forget it. Don't want you to get it out of your spirit. Verse number 21 in the New English translation concludes by saying that the creation itself will also be set free. The creation itself will also be set free. Where are the created beings of God? The creation itself will also be set free. The creation itself will also be set free. The creation itself, not for, for, from what? From the bondage, from the frustration, from the despair. And if I had to come to you today with a topic, I would just say, be set free. Be set free from the issues of this world. Be set free from the bondages that try to hold us down. If I were to want to encourage anybody and myself, come on, elder, preach to you too, to be set free because whom the son, come on, somebody, sets free is free indeed. Free indeed from the despair. Free indeed from the trouble. Free indeed from the sadness. Free indeed from the despair. Free, free, free. Where are the free created beings today. Who is the created one of God that's been set free? No more sufferings because you've been set free. No more trials because you've been set free. Free. No, not, 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 not that these won't happen, saints of God, but because you've been set free, uh, you don't see things like the world sees them. You don't see things even like you used to see them because you've been set free. You have an eye that's on the situation and the eye is the eye of God. You have been set free. And I, I just came, you know, this Independence uh, Weekend, of course, and we are celebrating some of us barbecues, some of us fireworks, some of us uh, traveling, some of us doing the thing that we think is uh, worthy of a holiday celebration. Some of us all four days, some of us all three, some of us off the whole week, getting ourselves ready to go places and have a good time because it's Independence Day. But can I share some Something with you about independence when I tried to find the, uh, the term independence in scripture, it's not there. Uh, it's not there. Uh, independence is not there because there is this independence that God wants us to be aware of. And it's not like the world would say that independence, uh, as you know, uh, possibly even by definition is to be able to freely do uh, what you can on your own. I'm paraphrasing. Let me let me go back to it and find it for you. But independence uh, uh, denotes that you don't need nobody. Huh? Independence uh, gives the example and the witness that you can do it on your own. Uh, independence, you remember the fact or state of being independent is what uh, independence is. And many of us couldn't wait to be on your own. Couldn't wait to get out of mama and daddy's house. Couldn't wait to have your own car. Couldn't wait to have your own house. Couldn't wait to have your own whatever it was because you wanted to be independent. Uh, so independence, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you, Holy Ghost. By definition is free from outside control. That's what independence is by definition in our culture, not depending on another's authority. 
Uh, that's what independent means by definition. And so you might be wondering, well, why wouldn't uh, independent be found in scripture? Well, it's because it's against God's will for us to be outside of the authority of God. And if you want to be independent from God, then God is saying you're not of my own family. If you want to be independent from God, then God is saying you're not one of my sons or my daughters. You read it in scripture, right? We read it in Romans chapter eight. He says, I want you to desire to be the revelation of the sons of God. That just does not only mean that the boys get to have a good time. That means that all of the family who are the children of faith get to have the benefits of knowing who God is, knowing what God can do, and living in the victory of who God says we are. Is there anybody grateful that you don't have to be independent from God? Because God is saying that I don't want you to be independent, so it's not in scripture. You won't find independent in scripture, but what you will find, uh, uh, let me reiterate it again, because God does not want us to be outside of his control. God does not desire for us to be outside of his own authority and depending on anyone else's authority for that matter. God desires that you won't fall into temptations. He said, lead not, you prayed it earlier, Sister Nanette, lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. God does not want us to be under the authority of anyone else. Set us free, God. Set set free. Set us free. What? Huh, hallelujah. What? 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 What is it about us that we want to be somehow uh, uh, not to be uh, 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 independent? We don't want to be. In, we want to be rather independent and not dependent. What is it about that spirit that shows up to let you know that God's not wanting you to be dependent? on the devil, because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. Remember that grace and that truth. Remember that freedom and that liberation. Remember what Jesus died so you could have is so that you have to be then dependent upon God. Why? Because we don't get this gift outside of God. Why? Because we don't get these gifts outside of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we don't get this promise outside of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because God says, because you can't be independent of me and get these gifts. And I like gifts. I don't know about you, but I like gifts. Be set free. All believers have been set free because whom God wants us to be this depending on another. We're depending on, if I could even still use the definition of independence, we're depending on God's control. We're depending that God will control our comings and our goings. We're depending upon God to control our ins and our outs, our highs and our lows. How do I know? Because when you look at the text in Romans chapter eight, verse number, uh, 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 where, uh, where, where is it, Holy Ghost? Verse number 18, the very first verse, consider our present sufferings. Who else would you want to be in control of your situation if you are suffering? You want the one who has an answer to every one of your pains. You want the one who has a power like no other power. More power than Tylenol, Advil, or Aleve. You want the one who has the power and the authority to take control. Somebody say take control, God. Take control of everything around us. Yeah, we want to be set free. We don't want to find ourselves still trying to control parts of our lives and telling God, I don't need you right here. God, I got this. Y'all know how we feel about that. I got this. No, we want God to take, what'd you say, Sister Herbert, this week? Take the wheel, Lord. Take the wheel. Be in control. We want not some outside force controlling our life. We don't want some outside entity. I said it on Wednesday. Is the answer in the president? Is the answer in the mayor? Is the answer in the doctor? Is the answer in the lawyer? The answer is in Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout out. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And in Romans chapter, the uh, eighth chapter, we have believers being shown to have this relationship 
with God. We're, we're shown, we're shown uh, through Paul's writings that uh, God uh, has a special place in mind for all of the believers. Uh, uh, where the believers at today? All the believers have a special place in God's heart. All the believers have a special place in God's mind. Not only does God want you to know that he will take control over every one of your situations, but God also wants you to know not only control would be in his heart for you to control the situation, to control the circumstance, to control, not to puppet you. Now, he don't want to puppet you, but he does want to control that the enemy won't be your first foremost thought. He wants to be able to control that the enemy only has so far. He will be permitted in your life. He wants to be able to control that you have him to seek the Lord first. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and then everything else will be added. He wants that kind of control. Control, not because he wants you to uh, uh, not have your own thoughts or have your own ways, but he assures us that when you have revelation, that would be my second point. Control, whose control of, of your life was my first. My second point would be what the revelation gift of God is. It's right here in the text. I know you didn't close your Bible because you know I'm going to ask you the question, but verse number 18 says, consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed. Can I tell you something about revelation? Revelation, hallelujah, is not given to everybody. Everybody don't get revelation. Some of us are still seeking for revelation. You're trying to figure out what to do. You're trying to figure out where to go. You're trying to figure out how to get there. But this is what revelation is. It's the divine disclosure that God gives to humanity. Only and divine is only from God. Divine can't be from a psychic. Divine is only from God. God. Divine can't be from a horoscope. Divine is only from God. Divine, hallelujah, supernatural disclosure given to humanity. Revelation is supernatural. It's of, over, the, over the realm of what nature would expect. It's over the realm of what humanity could provide. God says, I want to set you free. Be set free so that you will have this supernatural revelation of who I am in your life. Be set free. Be set free because this divine supernatural disclosure of information that's given only to humanity that believe in him have been set free because God says this revelation requires and concerns us being justified from our sinful nature. We used to be sinners, but now we're saved by what? By grace. We used to be sinners, but now we've been set free by who? By Jesus. We used to be out of the will of God, but now we're in the way of God. By who? By the power of the Holy Ghost. And is there anybody glad that you can come into this weekend, not just celebrating that what they say, but you can come into this weekend celebrating that I've been set free. I've been set free. Be set free. I've been born again. I've been born again. I've been bought with a price. God paid the ransom through Jesus Christ. I, I, I be set free. Be, 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 be set free. Be set free, be set free. And in this, and in this uh, justification of, of, of understanding that by the sinful nature that we came into the earth in, that Jesus wants to set us free and give us this life, then we get this opportunity to, to let the, elf, the devil know that the devil can't control us. The devil can't move us. The devil can't shake us. And so while the devil does try to put things in our path, well, that's his job and he's good about his job, but God is so much better about, somebody say God is so much much better. God is so much better. God is so much better. We serve a mighty God and he does mighty things. God is so much bigger. God is so much more faithful. God has so much more power. I told you about the preeminence because God has all the superior authority over everything. You got an issue? God has the power. You have a, a trouble? God has the power. You have a concern? God, 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 God. Ah, oh, God. 
God has all the power. He says, I want to be able to let you know I can control the situations that pertain to you when you release yourself to me because I want to give you revelation. I want to give you the divine supernatural disclosure over what's happening so that you will not be unaware or unadvised. I want to give you revelation and I want to give you hallelujah, the power of my control. And so we have the spirit power of God that's working and moving on the inside of us. And we're grateful that God shows us in this particular uh, word why there's no independence in scripture because he wants us to depend on him. He wants us to be free and whom the son sets free. And the way you get your freedom is not to be on an island by yourself. It's not to be uh, away from the uh, things of God and or the word of God. It's so that you can be fully submerged in the promises of God. How do you know the promises if you don't know the word? How do you know the promises if you haven't heard the word? How do you know the promises if you haven't studied the word? And so we study the word so that we show ourselves approved unto God, not unto man. And this dependence on God, not independent of God, no, the dependence on God is this supernatural spiritual freedom. Listen, say to God, the reason why it's important for us to remember that when, uh, when the apostle Paul says, I consider that my present sufferings are not worth comparing. He knows the people are suffering. He knows the trial. He knows the affliction. He, I would suspect even Paul who prayed, will you please take this thorn out of my side? And, G and God says, I will not do it, but I'll give you grace to go through it. Huh? And so even in the suffering where it may seem like people are still going through is something about having God's grace. If he told Paul, I'll give you grace to go through it. Won't God give you the grace to go through whatever affection? Won't God give you the grace to go through any trouble? Won't God give you God's grace to go through any trial? God said, it's because of the affliction that you know my grace. It's because of the trouble that you know I'm with you. It's because of my oh God, my control over your situation and my revelation that lets you know what I'm up to and what I'm doing, the supernatural disclosure of what's going on. Paul is reminding us that it's the unparalleled spiritual freedom when you depend fully on God. I, I can't depend on the state of Missouri. I can't depend on benefits coming through. I can't depend uh, because people are still yet waiting some for unemployment. Can you imagine that? Uh, the pandemic has been all going on three years and some folks still haven't got, you can't depend on man. All oh, you can put your confidence in, who you need to put your confidence and your trust in is on God. Somebody say, I trust God. I trust God. I trust God. So when we talk about being set free, be set free from putting your confidence confidence in the wrong folk. Be set free because other humans will fail. Be set free from where your confidence lies. Paul is telling us that this freedom, this liberation, this freedom that we are looking for and we're depending upon is because we are fully relying on God. I know, I know when I say it, I, I, it's hard. It's sometimes it's hard to even uh, say it because you know sometimes we don't fully rely on God, right? Uh, sometimes we just do we just do stuff and then we're in the midst of it and then we realize oh I didn't ask God about this and now we're in the midst of a trouble or we're missing a, in a situation and now we're calling on the Lord and this this way I'll keep calling on him keep calling on him because the Lord will hear and answer you but thanks to God what I'm trying to encourage us to do is to be in the place where we are fully depending on God. In every area of our lives, trouble in your marriage, fully depend on God. Don't depend on the other person to come out. You depend on God to bring you out. You depend on God to change the situation. You depend on God in your marriage. Fully depend on God. Fully depending on God for your children. They're acting like they don't know who they are. You fully depend on God. We'll show you the way to speak to them. We'll show you the way to deal with them. We'll show you the prayer to pray for them. You fully depend on God. Whatever your situation is, on your job with your boss, your boss is from hell. Your boss is from the spirit of the, of the satanic one. And you're trying to deal with your boss in a natural sense. And God says, but you need to fully depend on God as it relates to your boss. He will give you, God said, I'll give you revelation on how to deal with your boss. 
Won't he do it? Can I get at least one or two witnesses where you had some people in your life, in your workplace, and God, you did everything you knew how to do. You were sweet. You were kind. You were respectful. You were careful. You did everything you could or thought so to do. And they got worse when you got sweeter. And then you said, I don't know what else to do. Let me go to God. And God said, I got them. I got them. Pray for them. Put them under the blood. Plead the blood. Anoint their desk. Anoint their chair. Anoint their phone. Anoint the path way anoint their parking lot and you begin to trust God you fully depended on God and then God moved the boss or God promoted the boss or God retired the boss or God fired the boss whatever God did God said I have full control over the matter be set free be set free. So say to God, as I close, I'm just trying to confirm for us that in fact, if in fact, if in fact, we give God full and utter control over every situation. If we in fact trust God enough to give God, be set free. Don't let that spirit of worry. Don't let that spirit of worry. I say again, don't let that spirit of worry complicate your life. Make it unable for you to sleep at night, unable for you to eat, unable for you to have a good time because you worry. You, you fretful, you stirring in all your action. Don't let that demon of worry get on you and stay on you. In fact, if we fully rely and depend on God, the ability of God, the plan of God, that we are self, not self-sufficient, but self-reliant on God, that I'm nothing without God. I can't do nothing without God. Is there anybody's testimony? I wouldn't be here had it not been for God. I wouldn't have what I have. I wouldn't have seen what I've seen. I wouldn't have gone where I've gone. If it had not been for God, we are self-relying on God. We are putting ourselves completely and then throwing ourselves into the will and the way of God. How do I know this? Because Jesus Christ, Jesus, the perfect example, Jesus, the Christos, the, the anointed one and his anointed self, he could have done all kinds of things without God's authority. He could have gone all kinds of ways without authority. But remember what he said in the Garden of Gethsemane? Remember what he said when he knew that the soldiers were were coming to get him. Remember what he said? He said, not my will, but your will be done. So even Jesus, the Christ, even Jesus, the resurrected one and his resurrected anointed, even Jesus was self-reliant on God. Even Jesus said, this mind be like God. This Spirit, be like God. And how else can you be set free unless you follow Jesus? And so Jesus, when he said, not my will, your will, so be set free today, saints. Not our will, your will, oh God. Not my way, your way. I'm not going to do like some folk and throw a tantrum when I can't get my way. I'm going to ask you, God to make the way plain, make the path straight, make my fact known that when I utter a word, I'm relying on you. When I talk about something, I'm relying on you. I'm being set free in my communication. I'm being set free in my relationship. I'm being set free in my finances. I'm being set free in my workplace. I'm being set free in my neighborhood. Anybody want to declare it today? Be set free. Whatever you need to fill in the blank, be set free from. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Jesus said it. I'm just declaring it, be set free when he hung between two thieves. Be set free when they pierced him in the side. Be set free when he put his head in the locks of his shoulder and said, I give up the ghost. Be set free because Jesus got free and got liberated from this side and did what he had to do so that we could be free. 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 Be set free. Don't carry the world's burdens. Don't carry the sufferings of this present time. Allow the glory. Allow the liberation. Allow God can take control. Allow, allow God to give you revelation and insight about who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us. 
Oh, Lord, I've been set free. And when you're set free, one writer says that it's freer than anything they've ever experienced. When you've been set free, it's being like the God that you are serving. It's like being able to float. Anybody felt like you've been floating sometimes? Floating. What that one song say, float, float on. Come on, float on. Float, float, float on. Get the weight of the world off of you. Come on, float, float, float on. Float in the power. Float in the joy. Float Float, float, float on. Let the Lord know you've been set free like a balloon, a balloon release. Be set free. Go up higher. When you go up higher, it's because the weights have fallen off of you. Go up higher. Go up higher. Be set free. Don't let this world and the sufferings make you miss the revelation, make you miss that God is in control, or make you miss that Jesus is the example of being set free and liberated and giving us the power to overcome everything and anything that would try to distract or destroy us. I've been set free and I'm just simply coming as a witness. Are there any other witnesses today? We've been set free, been born again, full of the Holy Ghost's power. And with that in mind, whatever sufferings might come our way. They don't compare. Whatever trials might come my way, it does not compare to being set free in Jesus. Whatever issue might come my way because I'm created by God, the creation. Do you see it? It was repeated several times in these verses. The creation waits in eager expectation. The creation was subjected to frustration. The creation, hallelujah, itself will be liberated. Ah, I'm the creation. I've been liberated. I may be frustrated sometime, but I've been liberated. I may be frustrated sometimes, but I've been liberated because of the glory. Let the glory of the Lord feel your situation. Let the glory of the Lord lead your path to truth. Let the glory of the Lord allow his presence and his power to come over you. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Hallelujah. Be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Accept your freedom. Accept your liberation. Happy Independence Day. But accept your freedom. Accept your liberation from God. Be the sons of God. Be the children of the king. Be the one he can count on. And whoo. Yes, I'm my mama my say. Be the one. Hallelujah. That the glory of the Lord can be revealed in no frustration gonna keep me from my glory. No situation gonna keep me from my glory. I know what they, I know what they say. I know what they say. Talk is cheap, but listen, saints of God, as many of you have a testimony that proves that God was taking full control of your life. Many of you have a testimony that God revealed himself to you and you were set free from that thing. Hallelujah. And we, I, I too, I too, I to have a testimony and I can stand here with that confidence with that hope, with that great expectation of a future coming, that Jesus Christ is coming back and when he come back he's coming back for the believers and when he comes back for us he gonna take us to the mansion, the place he made for us, oh Lord, he gonna give us the robe and the crown and all of the jewels that come with the work we've done on this side, is there anybody today you're grateful that you've been saved free and not only in the earth but you got a place you're going I'm not made by man's hands that will allow you to know hey, my, mm, that this present suffering cannot be compared to the future glory that's coming for us I'm going to have glory in the earth and we're going to have glory in heaven when we have the mind to let God take control to let God make revelation and to be free, be set free by God. I pray something has been said to touch your heart, to renew your mind and to revive your righteous spirit. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. Let's get ready for the table. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood ha, for me. I've been set free. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. 
and I know it was the blood for me. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Yes, God. It was the blood. And for those who have not positioned themselves to be under the blood's covering and authority, if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your son, or the son of God, rather, as the savior of your life, as the Lord of your life, uh, we offer Jesus Christ to you because without Jesus, this being set free is not available. And we want to make certain that you have the power and the authority of Jesus the Christ. He is our elder brother who gave his life so that we could be adopted into the family of faith. And that's how we can celebrate the table because we know the responsibility that comes with the table. The table was his sign of his suffering. The table represents his life that he would freely give so that we could live. The table represents the sacrifices that Jesus would make on our behalf. The table represents that we might be ridiculed. We might be uh, uh, rejected. The servant, the servant was rejected by those who received him not. We too might be rejected, but Jesus said at the table, when you remember what I did for you, then you will be willing to do it in the earth. Greater work, Jesus said, you'll do because you believe on him. We have a work to do. We have a work to do. This life is meant to have enjoyment, but we also have a work to do to share this good message of being liberated. I'm gonna go see some fireworks, but I'm gonna be able to celebrate because I've been set free. My celebration is in my freedom in Jesus Christ. So we offer Jesus Christ to you. And if you make a confession with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that you are a sinner who needs to be saved and you repent, he said, you shall be saved. And then you connect with the ministry like the Ephesians 3.20 ministries and others that believe in Jesus Christ in the Bible teaching and receive that frequently so that you can be empowered with this power, this power, this dunamis power, like those explosions that we'll hear in the 4th of July. That's that same power that you can have in a daily walk with Jesus. So as we get ourselves ready, hallelujah, take your elements. These are uh, provided for us because Jesus Christ says, often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. It shows forth my suffering. And now, now he, 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 served. he served, he came to serve. He had washed their feet, he came to serve. And now he's serving up the meal that represents his body and his blood. And so we'll pray a prayer to change it from carnal to spiritual. And then we'll take the supper together, remembering the sacrifice and remembering his love. Hallelujah. Gracious, holy God, we thank you. Oh God, oh God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you that you find us even worthy to come to your table. We thank you, God, that you have found us worthy to partake in the remembrance of your son, Jesus. And so God, we ask that there, if there be anything in us that is unpleasing or unrighteous or unholy, that would cause this to be done in vain, God, we ask that you uproot it and you take it out of us and where it should not be in our thoughts, where it should not be in our body, where it should not be in our emotions, God, help us to be the demonstration of Jesus. That's why we're coming to your table. And we ask that you change this from a carnal use. It's not just having a cracker and juice. It's not just having the unleavened bread and water or whatever our elements are. This is about taking upon ourselves to be a participant in your work of being your representation. Help us to be the light of this dark world. And so God, we ask you change it, change it, change it, God. Change this from the bread, change it to the body. Change this from the juice and change it from the wine, change it to the blood and change us while you're changing so that we can be better, more like you, so that we can hear a servant well done, whom I'm well pleased. Help us to be your witness and in your glory and for your glory is our prayer, oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe in this time of worship. Amen and thank God, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And thank God, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he distributed it amongst the disciples and he gave thanks to God. And he said, take this and eat of it. It is my body that will be bruised and broken for you. And they all did eat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup and he referred it to as the cup of the new covenant, the cup that will take away the sins of the world for those who would believe. He said, take and drink. This is my promise unto you. The blood that will be shed on the cross of Calvary will be sufficient for your sin and your redemption. And they all did drink. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, oh God. Hallelujah. And as the disciples went away with Jesus, they went to the Mount of Olives and sung a hymn. And they believe, we believe that there was a celebration before his crucifixion. Say to God, we honor God for loving us so much that he would die for us. And then he didn't stay dead, but that he rose with all power. And then he shares the power with us so that we would be uh, able to stand as a witness of his love and of his grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. It is amazing. Come on, put your hands together. And give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. He deserves the praise and the glory and the honor. Be set free. Be set free in every situation, in every circumstance. God still wants you to walk in your liberation. Be set free. And so we're, we're, our time together has come to a close. Uh, please join us this week. We will have uh, our Faith and Healing Prayer Line on Tuesday morning at 525 Central Daylight Time. Uh, join us and the ambassadors as we continue to pray, Faith and Healing Prayer Line partners, as we pray heaven down. Hallelujah. Join us on Wednesday for Bible study. Uh, midday, midweek Bible study. We'll be talking about still um, the conversation of work, worship, and deliverance. And we're thankful to God for that. Uh, work, worship, and service. I'm sorry. Work, worship, and service. Excuse me. Work, worship, and service uh, on Wednesday, uh, midday Bible study. And then we'll be back next Sunday. Hallelujah. The Lord allows we'll be back next Sunday. Uh, but before that, we'll have, uh, we'll have corporate prayer on this Saturday, by the way, for the faith um, family Bible study will be corporate prayer, uh, corporate prayer for this Saturday by way of announcement. And then on Sunday, we'll come together around the Sunday school lesson and have a good time. Yes, oh God, in the word of God. And so as we go, hallelujah, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his great peace. Until next time, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. As you go, let your left foot say glory and your right foot say amen. Hallelujah. Love you all. Ha, God, God, God bless you. Glory to God. Glory to God.